The House of Sea is really knocked it out of the park with this brand new release, so stay tuned and find out my thoughts on it. Hey, what's going on guys? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, what I do is I make fragrance related content. So if you love fragrances, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and also be sure to follow my fragrance Instagram page. But today guys, we are reviewing the brand new 2022 release from the House of Sillage. Of course, I'm talking about Passion and De L'Amour, Nouvelle Liaison. I think that's how you pronounce it, probably not, but We'll go with that guys but this is like i said the brand new launch in the men's collection at least from them they did actually release a passion daily more for a female within the female collection but this one is targeted towards men even though to me it isn't very like a masculine fragrance but we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit now i do also want to mention that this fragrance was actually sent out to me by the guys over at the house of sea so shout out to them I'll leave their link down below where you'll be able to check out this fragrance and all the other ones within their entire collection. And they do run some sales quite a bit. I think they have a sale going on right now. So definitely be sure to check them out. So let's go some information about Passion de l'Amour Nouvelle Liaison now. So this fragrance was, of course, like I said, released in 2022. I think maybe just a few months ago it actually first dropped. Uh, the retail price for this, at least for the 75 mil bottle, which is the only size it comes in at the moment, it's going to run you $295, but like I said, I do have a sale going on right now for this fragrance, so you can get, I think, around 50 bucks off or something like that, so definitely check that out. Now, for the perfumer behind this one, there's actually not much information. It's not listed on Fragrantica yet or anything like that, so unfortunately, I could not find the perfumer behind this fragrance, but I would definitely like to know if anyone has any information about that. Leave that in the comments down below as well. I also do want to mention that this is actually a straight to parfum rather than like an eau de toilette or an eau de parfum. So you are getting a lot more oil concentration, which is always nice. I uh, just usually boost the longevity and things like that. But with all that information out of the way, let's go ahead and look at the packaging and presentation you will get with this fragrance. All right, so take a look at this awesome box, guys. Just look how beautiful this box looks. You have like a lizard right there. It's in this green kind of a scheme going on with a rose. Passion de l'Amour by House of Sillage, of course. On the bottom, you do have, I'm assuming that's the batch code right there on a sticker. On the back, some of your information, like I said, is an extract to parfum in the 2.5 milliliter bottle or 75 mils. And you do open it up like so, where your fragrance will be housed right there. And you are greeted with this nice House of Sillage card, which is always a nice attention to detail. But yeah, fantastic box, guys. But be careful when you open this because your fragrance can slip out and pretty much possibly break if it lands on the floor, which would not be good. Now let's look at the bottle now. So the bottle, man, this is where it absolutely shines, guys. It is in this kind of dark green kind of bottle with the gold accents. Now this is actually real 18 karat gold plated, I think on here and also on that plaque, which is awesome as well. Um, on the top, it does look a little bit different than a traditional kind of bottle because it has a nice mechanism where the uh, atomizer is actually covered, but if you hit this button right here, it actually opens up like that, which is so sweet. I've never seen anything like that before, and I just love that kind of attention to detail, and I think it is awesome. On the bottom, you do also have your sticker with some of your information as well, and then nothing on the back. But all in all, guys, I am a big fan of the House of Siaj's packaging and presentation. They definitely knocked it out of the park. In the top, you have bergamot, pink pepper, and rose. In the middle, you have cedarwood, sandalwood, and the leather. And in the base, you have musk, vanilla, agarwood, and patchouli. Now, that's actually a pretty awesome note breakdown, I gotta say. It has some of my favorite notes, such as oud, vanilla, patchouli, of course, and the leather. So, let's go ahead and spray this one and see what we actually get and test out this atomizer here. Very nice atomizer. It's a nice distribution, so nothing to complain about that. So... Let's see, let's remind myself of this beautiful creation, guys. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah, I pick it up in the air and it's so distinctive, guys. And it has a phenomenal sillage as well with this fragrance. Hence the name House of Sillage, but let's see. This fragrance is actually inspired by the South Pacific. So obviously you're gonna be expecting um, like ocean breeze and stuff like that. And in the opening, you do kind of get that vibe. It's very fresh, very citrusy. You get like a sparkling bergamot alongside some uh, pink pepper as well. And a nice rose, like a clean rose I get. But 
The rose is not prominent whatsoever. It's just kind of like hidden in the back of the opening. I do not get a burst of rose, but you can definitely detect it alongside the pink pepper in a nice, clean, sparkling bergamot. And the bergamot comes across very nice, like juicy, sparkling, and vibrant. Now the freshness, the sparkling bergamot, stuff like that is not really what this fragrance is based off of or what they're really going for, but you do get that in the opening. But that opening, guys, does not last that long whatsoever. It does start to dry down once you get in like the middle and the dry down of this fragrance becomes very sweet with that vanilla. And honestly, I almost get like a candy-ish kind of vibe to this fragrance, like a green apple candy, like a Jolly Rancher. I do kind of get that when I think about it, like kind of a, a sticky green apple kind of vibe. Very sweet once it starts to dry down a little bit. You do get a ton of vanilla. You also do get a nice smoky kind of uh, black leather in the composition as well, which kind of does balance it out very, very nicely, guys. Makes it very good for like an evening out if you are like this in the South Pacific. A good like evening fragrance for sure. Now where I think this fragrance is actually really going for is in the base of this. Especially with the color scheme they went for the green and gold. Because in the base is where you get a ton of musk, you get a ton of vanilla. And you get a burst of that patchouli guys. And I love patchouli. It does bring in a nice earthiness to the composition. It is a little bit woody as well from the cedar and sandalwood, but not so much. And you do also have that agarwood too, which is of course oud. Now the oud, it does come out a little bit in the like very, very dry down of this fragrance. Like right now on the test strip, you're not really going to get any oud whatsoever. And the oud isn't really barnyardy. It's not really uh, dirty, fecal, moldy, nothing like that. It is just a nice oudy wood is what I would say how it comes across to me, but... Yeah, if you're looking for a patchouli fragrance that you can actually pull off in the warmer months, like the spring and summer, you will absolutely love this one. It's not like a um, a very kind of hippie patchouli, but you do definitely get an earthiness from it, which I am absolutely in love with. Once I see a fragrance has patchouli, I'm, I just get so excited to try it out and see how that house actually blends the patchouli in with the rest of the notes. And they did a really, really good job with the, um, this fragrance from the House of Sears. Now. The House of Sears is a fragrance house that I've seen for about two years now, but never actually owned the bottle, never smelled anything from them. And this is actually my first and only bottle I have from them, but they did send out a sample pack as well from all the, uh, the masculine line. And I gotta say, I think this is actually my favorite one. They definitely did something special with this launch, guys. It's very unique, very different. And it actually kind of blew me away the first time I smelled it. I was like, wow. Wasn't really expecting that. I mean, maybe a little bit because of the bottle. Like I said, it has like a sticky kind of um, candy apple vibe too with the earthy patchouli, a little bit of oud. Heavy on vanilla, very, very sweet from the vanilla, very creamy as well. And you do get a nice must. Um, it's not really like an animalic must. It's kind of more like a clean white must, I would say. It does wrap off the entire blend perfectly, guys. So let's talk about seasons I think would be best for Passion de L'Amour. Honestly, I would have to say fall, spring, and summer. Probably not the winter. It's not deep. It's not really dark enough for the winter months. Um, but yeah, fall, perfect for fall just because of that nice dry down. And also in the evening time, it works perfect for it as well. So like evenings and spring and summer. But also in the spring when it is a little bit hot out, you can definitely rock it as well. Because like I said, that opening is so fresh, so citrusy, so vibrant, and just very, very sparkling and a little bit spicy as well. But yeah, fall, spring, and summer is perfect for this fragrance. So let's talk about gender and age groups I think is best for this. Now, it is obviously in the masculine line of fragrances from the House of Sears, but guys, there's nothing that actually makes this extremely on the masculine side of things. This actually comes across a very, very unisex to me. So if you're a woman actually watching this and you're kind of persuaded away because of the bottle or you own the women's version of Passion de L'Amour, Definitely do not be scared to try this one out because like I said, there's nothing extremely masculine about this whatsoever. You know what, like I said, it has the patchouli and the oud, but it does, doesn't have that um a kind of rugged, rough, masculine side of things. So definitely unisex with this fragrance. Now, as far as ages goes, I have to say, guys, this actually does sort of have a juvenile kind of um vibe to it. It's nothing really mature, nothing kind of old school, nothing like that. It does have a playful side of things too because... Like I said, it's very sweet. Like I said, it comes across a little bit like a candy. So yeah, anyone probably in their early 20s and up, I think would be perfect for this fragrance or that it would suit. But at the end of the day, you can wear any fragrance at any age. It's all on what you like and your preferences as fragrances. But when I picture this, definitely an early 20s fragrance and up 100% and unisex. So let's talk about the occasion I think is best for this and talk a little bit on the performance as well. Now for occasions, guys, 
I would honestly have to go with more casual because like I said, kind of um, tying in with the gender and age that's best for this, it is a little bit juvenile and has a playful touch to it. So it would definitely work more so on the casual side of things, even though you probably could dress it up as well too. Sometimes I like to do, I like to dress up more casual fragrances. Um, it, sometimes that can work and it would definitely work for this. But if I had to pick out of the two, way more on the casual side of things. If you're just going out with friends, if you're going out to dinner, if you're just hanging around running errands, that kind of thing is perfect for this fragrance. So yeah, now on the performance, guys, this is where it actually shocked me a lot. Of course, with a name like House of Siage, they gotta be beast mode when it comes to the Siage stuff because that is their name. That is what they're known for. And that's what their whole fragrance is pretty much based off of, at least from the name. And the Siage with this stuff is so, so heavenly, guys. It has a perfect trail that actually leaves behind you when you walk around. It just smells so good in the air. I actually prefer this fragrance in the air rather than like up close on a test strip or up close on your skin. There's something magical about this once it touches the oxygen and leaves your skin. It's just so, so beautiful. So for longevity, I got around eight hours or so with this one, which is about average in the longevity, maybe a slightly above average. Um, so yeah, nothing to complain about at all. It would definitely get you through an entire workday. As far as like a uh, projection goes, I got around four hours of very, very nice projection. And alongside that sealage for four hours, it just worked perfectly guys. So if you're worried about this fragrance not performing or anything like that, do not worry about that. Like I said, it is also an extract to pop foam. So performance is definitely there. Even though off the test strip, it doesn't really come across like it would be extremely potent or nuclear or nothing like that. But for some reason guys, the way they blended this together just works very, very flawlessly. Yeah, that's pretty much gonna wrap up my review of Passion de l'Amour Nouvelle Liaison. Like I said, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but yeah, let me know down below if you've actually um, tried anything from the House of Siage. If you're thinking about picking this one up, um, I'd love to obviously hear all your comments. But yeah, that's gonna do it for me, guys. Leave a like on the video, video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you guys haven't already, and I'll catch all you guys in the next upload. Take care, everybody.